Good evening and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Jesse Pagan. The San Diego City Council passed an emergency ordinance requiring all city employees be fully vaccinated from COVID-19 or face losing their jobs. Employees have until Wednesday to comply and city contractors have until January 3rd. The council voted 8 to 1 to pass the mandate with Councilman Chris Kate casting the lone no vote. According to the city, lost work time from COVID between October 1st of last year and September 30th this year has totaled more than three and a half million dollars. This council has learned the mistakes of the past. They are students of history. They understand the times we find ourselves in and they understand that bold action is necessary to get out of this pandemic. And let me be clear, vaccines are the way out of this pandemic. The city will provide medical and religious exemptions on a case by case basis as required by law, but any city employee who refuses to get vaccinated and is not provided with an exemption will be fired. A COVID-19 vaccine mandate for San Diego Unified students is temporarily blocked following a decision by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. The ruling came down yesterday. The reaction is coming in today, and it all comes following a lawsuit filed on October on behalf of a 16-year-old Scripps Ranch High School student who argued religious exemptions should be honored. News 8's Shannon Handy has more on that lawsuit and what happens next in the case. This ruling came down to the wire. The mandate requires all students 16 and up be fully vaccinated by December 20th, meaning they would have had to have their first dose by today. Now, as of right now, that deadline is up in the air. The mandate is basically on hold for now until the process plays out. Paul Jonas, oh, special counsel for the there's Thomas More Society and partner with Lomandri and Jonas says his client and her family are pleased by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals emergency injunction, which temporarily blocks a vaccine mandate that requires all San Diego Unified students 16 and up be vaccinated by December 20th. The Court of Appeal has taken a look at this case, has deemed that our claims have merit, and is granting the extraordinary relief of an emergency injunction in order to ensure that no one's rights are deprived. Back in October, Jonas Firm filed a lawsuit on behalf of a 16-year-old Scripps Ranch High School student athlete who argued her Christian beliefs prevent her from getting the vaccine. She's not anti-vaccine. Her family's not anti-vaccine. Uh, she's only opposed to vaccines that were made in a certain way. And many, many people of faith are opposed to those vaccines. Last night, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals filed its decision referring to the fact pregnant students can postpone vaccination for nine months, saying in part, the injunction shall be in effect only while a per se deferral of vaccination is available to pregnant students under San Diego Unified School District's COVID-19 vaccination mandate. The injunction shall terminate upon removal of the per se deferral option for pregnant students. Jonas says if pregnant students are exempt from getting the vaccine, others should be too. The state can't treat the secular activity better than the religious activity. The district did not respond to our multiple requests for comment. Jonas says if San Diego Unified changes its mandate and allows for more exemptions, this case will resolve itself. If not, they'll take it as far as they need to. We don't really know yet what's next, but um, for the time being, we've gotten the relief we've requested. We're going to ask for that relief to be permanent. Though it's unrelated to this lawsuit, Jonas says his client has already had COVID, so doesn't feel as though medically she needs the vaccine. Now, depending on what happens with this injunction, she's willing to take this case all the way to the Supreme Court. All right, Shannon, thank you. The Biden administration is allowing some federal agencies to delay firing unvaccinated employees. The Office of Management and Budget says some agencies can wait until after the holidays to fire workers who've not followed the COVID-19 vaccine mandate. An official called this a, quote, education and counseling period. It's supposed to be the first step in enforcing the mandate and will keep going into next month. Under the mandate, federal workers needed to have at least one dose by last Monday. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. We have the best vaccine in the world, <clears throat> the best medicines, the best scientists, and we're learning more every single day. President Biden is taking action to try and slow the spread of the new Omicron COVID-19 variant. Today, U.S. travel restrictions went into effect, banning travelers from South Africa and seven other nations from entering the U.S. So far, Omicron has been detected in more than a dozen countries, including Canada. Health officials believe the strain will be here in the U.S. soon and hope travel restrictions buy more time to learn more about the strain. 
Doctors at UC San Diego say the Omicron variant is likely here in the U.S. and now it is just a matter of finding it. Dr. Davy Smith says they are anxious to get their hands on a sample so they can learn more about it and pass that information on to the public. We want to see whether or not uh, the medications that we have for treatment of uh, COVID uh, still work. So those monoclonal antibodies that everybody talks about, we want to test those. I think that the vaccines will still be able to work to protect people from getting really sick and needing a hospital, uh, hospital or dying. Dr. Smith urges everyone to get vaccinated and if eligible to get a booster to give yourself the most protection. He says it gives your immune system a head start if you do contract COVID because your cells will know how to recognize it. A San Diego police officer accused of threatening a sailor with a gun while off duty this past summer was back in court today. New details about the incident involving Trevor Sterling were unveiled at a preliminary hearing. News 8's Dana Marie McNichol is in Pacific Beach outside the bar where the alleged assault happened with what we've learned. Today in court, we learned more about what happened that night. Here outside Moonshine Beach, off-duty officer Trevor Sterling is accused of pulling his personal gun on a Navy SEAL trainee while they were waiting in line. It was a busy July night in Pacific Beach when Navy SEAL Bud's trainee Joseph Kirkendall and friends were in line to enter Moonshine Beach Bar in Pacific Beach. Kirkendall was the first to take the stand, stating Officer Sterling appeared to be highly intoxicated. Sterling is in a green t-shirt wearing a white hat. Surveillance footage from that night shows Sterling walking a few feet away from Kirkendall until walking over to him. Kirkendall's identity is being protected. Uh, Mr. Sterling approached me and pulled out a what looked to be a 45, or at the time I thought it was a, a flare gun, out of his, his pants in the front and put the revolver to my right. Kirkendall, seen in the white t-shirt, says he remained calm in that moment. It was a large gun and I just at the time thought surely in God's name no one's pulling a gun out here. The Navy SEAL trainee attempted to de-escalate the situation. I was telling Mr. Sterling that whatever it is that he wanted to do, we were not going to do and we would not be taking care of any business. San Diego Police Department said when they arrived on scene, they detained Trevor Sterling and arrested him on a felony count of assault with a deadly weapon and charged him with brandishing a gun. Patrick Griffin, Sterling's attorney, made a motion for a reduction to a misdemeanor, but the judge denied that. Sterling was bound over on all charges. Sterling's attorney says moving forward, he's focusing on why this happened. He says his client came from a memorial earlier that day of a fallen officer, as well as suffering from PTSD as a Marine Corps veteran. In Pacific Beach, Dana Marie McNichol, News 8. Thanks, Dana Marie.